Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the 2019 drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sean Broderick. He's the senior editor at WeissRatings.com. Welcome back to the show, Sean. Thanks for having me on. Sean, the House has approved a regulation that will allow U.S. banks to deal with marijuana financing. Is that good news for the marijuana sector, finally? Yes. Uh, well, it is and it isn't in that this is a very good bill. And um, and uh, it has all sorts of sweeteners in there to get through the Senate. It has uh, stuff to protect banks when they deal with hemp growers and like stuff like that, which will appeal to... Mitch McConnell, who runs the Senate, and it has um, stuff in there to protect banks when they deal with um, arms manufacturers and payday lenders because Obama had put some restrictions in about that and the Republicans hated that. So it has a lot of stuff in there. The thing is, it has to get through the Senate, and that's not guaranteed. If it does, though, that's going to be huge for the cannabis uh, industry because along with protecting banks so that they can give loans to cannabis companies. One thing that very few people talk about, but we really should mention, is that this will allow you to buy cannabis in the United States with your credit card. Right now, that is not possible. It's a strictly cash business. So, you will go from an industry that right now can't use credit cards with customers to being able to use credit cards with customers, debit cards as well. And that is going to be a tremendous change. So uh, we'll see what happens. There's actually a bunch of things going on with cannabis. I just got back from the Toronto Money Show, as a matter of fact. I was there this past weekend, and uh, I spoke on their cannabis track, which was very well attended. Uh, I did hear from uh, people who had been to the show last year that it was um, like the cannabis track was much smaller. There were much fewer companies there. Uh and so there is that, but those that are there were really excited about a whole bunch of things. One um, that might interest your uh, listeners is that um, Cannabis 2.0, which, you know, they'll uh, legalize derivatives like oils and edibles and uh, drinks, cannabis drinks, uh, next month. But, of course, that's the actual legalization. Implementation comes later. But... Many of the companies I talked to were quite positive. They'll have stuff on the shelves for Christmas. And they think that'll be a big boost to the industry is to get that Christmas traffic for the, um, for the cannabis product. So, um, certainly up in Canada, people are looking forward to that down here in the U.S. Uh, we'll watch what's happening with the banking bill because it's extremely important. Uh, don't count your chickens on that yet, but at least what we've seen now, it looks quite positive. Of course, in B.C., we've had a horribly poor rollout of legal marijuana with the provincial government being very slow to approve outlets. Uh, they've only made $20 million or something like that when neighboring Alberta, a very conservative province, which is a lot like Texas, has made $120 million on legal cannabis sales. So we're kind of wondering because B.C. was famous for its bud, not so much anymore. Is yeah, that a well, problem? Actually, that was a that 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 was a very important topic at the money show in Toronto. People were talking about that and about the horrible job that has been done by certain provincial uh, governments in the rollout and by the federal government as well. By the way, who have actually made it tough to transport and sell um, cannabis uh, for at least some companies. So. Um, you put those two things together, it looks like the government has really mucked it up there, or at least some parts of the government have, like, mucked it up, and that's not helping. But on the other hand, you could look at it and say, you know what, this this will pass. They will get better at it. 
things will happen. And so that means, you know, it'll just give much easier, um, much easier, like, comparisons, say, this time next year, once things really start moving. So there is that as well. Yes, I mean, if we had a, a free, true uh, market for marijuana on in the private sector, you would see little, uh, like you have craft brewing uh, outlets with a restaurant and so on. Right. We should see craft marijuana with uh, an accompanying, you know, little garden where you can go out and enjoy it and uh, maybe get something to eat as well. Well, that was one of the other topics people talked about. There are more changes coming in the law, and that's one thing they really want to do. Marijuana should be treated just like alcohol. It's less dangerous than alcohol. Just treat it like alcohol. And uh, so we'll see what happens. Part of it is people have to get used to the idea. You know, um, they just aren't used to it. Now, there's a lot of resistance. People are naturally conservative. And uh, so they have trouble adjusting to the new things. But that adjustment will come. That change will come. We're at the very early stages of this. And uh, things are going to get much bigger and much better. Yeah, when you say uh, changes in attitude, I was at a backyard party where people were passing marijuana around, and I felt very nervous and paranoid, and they said, Jim, don't worry, it's legal now. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll have more with Sean Broderick right after this. Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sean Broderick. Sean, uh, the U.S. government is discussing limiting Chinese listings on the U.S. stock exchanges. What would that do to the U.S. equity markets if you can't have Chinese money? Well, I can tell you what it's doing to it right now is the uh, U.S. equity market hates it. <laughs> we were actually up earlier in the day, and then this news came out, and like, things went down. You can see why they're doing this, because we are having a trade struggle with the U.S., uh, excuse me, with China that's on multiple levels. And one thing China wants really desperately is it wants access to more U.S. funds, right? And so if we don't let them list their stock, or don't let them list as many stocks here, then there's less of our capital flowing over to China, and so it's like one way to fight that battle. Um you know, uh, we'll just have to see how this plays out. Um, I guess that the U.S. is holding this stick up in the air, waiting to see what happens um, on October 10th and 11th when the U.S. and China meet in Washington to discuss trade and intellectual property rights. And um, so, uh, and so, one of the things that they have as a stick is delist is the delisting of China-based stocks that trade on U.S. exchanges and removing some of those companies from certain funds. How would that be accomplished? I mean, that's the threat they're making, but how would they actually accomplish that? Would you tell, you know, Morty and Martha, who happen to hold, say, Alibaba in their retirement account, that they have to sell it? I mean, uh, how is that actually going to work out? But it is a threat being held up right now, and that's kind of weight on the market right now. Does the U.S. government have the legal right to tell you where you can and cannot invest your money? Well, the, they can say who and who can't be listed. If, uh, say, um, uh, they find some problem with them, I mean, you've uh, you you've probably seen the paperwork that these companies have to file the list on the NASDAQ and the NYSE. It's insane. Well, if you start finding problems with paperwork, you can get anybody kicked off if you want to. 
So that's the threat that they're holding over them right now. Again, I'm not sure how they do it, and it might just be a threat because they want um, China to move more when we have that meeting October 10th and 11th. So we'll probably see things come to a head around that date. I don't expect any resolution by that, but if both sides can come away smiling and say they made some progress, even if they don't, that might be uh, that might be the time that the market takes as the signal for the next rally. We'll have more with Sean Broderick right after the break. Grand Portage Resources Herbert Gold Project in Southeast Alaska highlights increased gold resource, indicated and inferred, of 860,000 ounces, in excess of 10 grams per ton gold. Expansion drilling is planned on the Herbert Gold property for the summer of 2019. Grand Portage Resources trading symbols are GPG on the TSX Venture, GPTRF on the OTCQB, and GPB on Frankfurt. For more information, please visit our website, grandportage.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sean Broderick. Sean, what's happening in the computer chip industry right now? Uh, That's kind of falling on its face. That's uh, thanks to uh, Micron. Um, which, uh, 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 it just really lowered its guidance, <laughs> like huge, right? And, um, and, uh, let's see. Now, late Thursday, Micron delivered better than expected results. That's the good news, right? But, uh, it flashed its, um, not only its earning guidance for the first quarter, but also its view on capital equipment spending for the current year fiscal 2020, and so that sent that stock sliding lower. Now, this is a chip stock, which means it's on the front line of the trade war between the U.S. and China. But other chip stocks that are showing strength, and I've noticed many of them are, you have to wonder if those are vulnerable to the same kind of correction. I think they might be, and if uh, people have the nerve for, like, buying put options or else maybe selling things short, that might want to be something they look at because what Micron is telling us is whatever agreement they do or don't work out in October, the trade battle between the U.S. and China continues. Energy stocks, are they a safe haven? They are for me in my personal portfolio. I mean, be, um, but those uh, stocks that I own um, particularly um, are like ones that uh, pay dividends and raise dividends. So energy stocks that pay nice dividends and keep raising those dividends, I like those in my personal portfolio, and they're doing rather well. Now, one thing is that uh, it all depends on what part of the energy market you look at. For example, Baker Hughes has uh, lowered its um, its its like report on how many drill rigs are at work in the U.S. oil fields uh, for like six weeks in a row. So you think, well, that's bad news, right? But if you want to look at what's moving, say, in the last couple days, even the last week or so, um, oil services stocks are actually holding up pretty well, and some are doing quite well. What's this mean? This means that those companies that can survive will thrive because they're looking at less competition for that. So, uh, you know, you have to pick what area you go into. I think that you can definitely have winners in the energy space. One reason is that well, Wall Street hates it right now. So, you know, all that negativity is really priced in. So when you have news like we've had recently, which is that um, President Trump is willing to lift sanctions on Iran as long as they'll come back to the table and talk, or that Saudi Arabia has achieved a partial truce in Yemen, whatever partial truce means, when you hear news like that, you know, that kind of weighs on the price of oil, and certainly the price of oil is down, but those stocks that can still make money, you know, they're actually looking quite good. And so that's why I'm still holding on to my energy stocks that pay dividends and keep raising those dividends because uh, their future looks very bright indeed. For people who want to meet Sean up close and personal, they're going to have an opportunity in New Orleans. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, November 1st through 4th. Um, that's... Uh, 
that's a that's a big conference they have down there. It's the New Orleans Investment Conference. I was speaking on cannabis. I might be speaking on uh, gold and silver. I've asked for another slot. Sometimes they humor me. Uh, and um, there'll be um, all sorts of natural resource companies. It tends to be natural resource heavy, but it isn't just natural resources. So if you like going to a conference in a great city with fantastic food and excellent music and you want to meet some of the smartest people in the business, do check out the New Orleans Investment Conference. It's a good conference, and it has a lot going on for it, and I'll be there November 1st through 4th. Is there a website where people can find out more about you and the conference? Well, um, uh, I would Google the New Orleans Investment Conference, and for me, just go to wealth-wave.com. Wealth-wave.com. Wealthwave is uh, where my free e is, and you get that three times a week. And so uh, that's a lot of fun, a good read. You get free stock picks and all that stuff. Sean, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks. I always have fun. My guest has been Sean Broderick, Senior Editor at WeissRatings.com. If you have any questions for Sean or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.